Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention please, because coming to you live from the beautiful on-air media studios in Dallas, Texas, this is Far Out Fiesta, episode 157, Utopia Archipelago. I am your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. Please, please give it up for our amazing cast, Rob Hutzman, yes. Crystal Keith, and Juliana Briscoe. Yes. I got a quick question. Oh, yeah. do you have a lunchbox? Did you have a lunchbox that was particularly memorable? A memorable lunchbox yes. from your childhood or your adulthood? No mm. judgment. Uh, Kristen, yeah. do you have one? Oh, I had a strawberry shortcake one and awesome. I loved it. Yeah, do you know what happened to it? No. Aw, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What about you, Rob? Oh, yeah, in fact, I, I still have it. It's, it's the uh, the Marvel superheroes. It was the, the, the metal. Lunchbox. Yeah, mine all, was metal. Yeah, with all the superheroes on it. They were magical. kind of embossed, you know. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, 3D and had the human yeah. torch and Captain oh, America. Gosh, and mine Hulk. was. I think, awesome. I think it was like the Avengers, basically. Did it have a matching thermos? It did. I love the matching <laughs> thermos. <laughs> Pretty sure it's, it's, it's the 1977 edition of Ooh, the Avengers. Yes. So, they just don't yeah. make them like they used they to. Don't. What about you, Jules? The rust. <laughs> uh, I probably had like a bunch of Disney ones growing up, and when I worked in uh, uh, with special needs kids, I had like a little rainbow one that I had for fun. Awesome! So that was Aww. Awesome! That was my I favorite. had Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, hey. Jim oh, Carrey gang was on there. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about you, Jason? Yeah. Uh, I was sporting the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ooh, back in the choice. day. Yep. Nice. You know what's weird? I remember kids having Pele lunchboxes. The soccer player. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I remember Pele was on lunchboxes back in the <laughs> oh, 70s. Wow, That's really? how huge he was. Uh, Dallas wow. Cowboys, too, uh, when they were I remember that. good. <laughs> All right. Yes. Far out. Let's, let's fiesta. Yeah. Utopia, Utopia Archipelago. Archipelago. Nelson, our guests will be arriving shortly. Uh, grins, everyone. Like this. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Satan is real. N -n -n no, Nelson, that's creepy. That's a face-eating grin. Well, where I come from. Oh, where's that? Weatherford. Well, why didn't you just say in Weatherford? Mm, is this conversation important to anything that follows? It is not. Utopia, Utopia Archipelago. Shall I say my catchphrase? Catchphrase ahoy, Nelson. The human cannonballs. The human cannonballs. <laughs> That's right, Nelson. Our guests will be arriving as human cannonballs. Yes, I said the human cannonballs. The human cannonballs. Our guests will be arriving as human cannonballs to our luxurious but remote tropical <laughs> archipelago resort. And they will all have one thing in common. Horror sweat? Yes, but not what I was going for. Anxiety over impending massive head injuries from the human cannonballing. Probably. But not what I was going for. Compromised bladders from the potential head injury fear associated with human cannonballing. They all want to live out their personal dreams. Oh, you mean the fantasies. Well, I, that, that's one way of putting it. And they're all stinking rich. Well, they're traveling by human cannonball, so yes, they're stinking. Uh, shall we greet them, introduce them, and... Talk about the fantasies here in the lobby. A wide shot to show all of our special guest stars. Well, I think we'll introduce them individually as their fantasies play out. Well, why is that, Captain Goodfellow? Actor to voice ratio. I dig. Shall we meet our first guests? 
Well, let's pause for a moment while a smaller, unrelated story unfolds. Mm, commercial? Yuppers? The single Marshall and Yona are doing the commercial. Then they'll probably be back in the show later. Yuppers? Utopia, Utopia Archipelago. Archipelago! Yona, I need to get to the airport. It is too far for me to piggyback you. True. <laughs> and you have put on a few pounds uh, since we've last traveled from the Old West. Well, people are heavier in the future, and this 21st century molasses is irresistible. Fucking delicious sorghum, too. You put that shit on everything. Well, I put it on everything. Molasses or sorghum. Oh, we seem to have strayed from our original topic. Quit calling me fat. It makes me think about, it makes me think about Sorghum and molasses. God, I still need to. I still need to ride to airport. On that, we can agree. Hey, ladies. Hello, weirdo. Uh, ever hear of ride sharing? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that we time traveled from the old west. Blah blah blah. That blah 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 is a charming twenty twenty first century idiom. Interrupting isn't what? charming. It has nothing to do with the fact that we time travel from the Old West, but no. Tell me more, weirdo. All right, Sherry, there's a way to save travel costs by paying a stranger to drive you around in their car. That sounds very dangerous. Please put down the neck, arrows, Yona. Tell me more. Uncomfortable ride shares. Uncomfortable ride shares. Uncomfortable ride shares. A stranger will pick you up in their car and take you to where you need to go at a very reasonable price. Well, that does sound uncomfortable. But wait, there's more. Too bad. I am no longer listening. Not only will a stranger pick you up in their car, but you will also share that ride with at least one other stranger prone to making confusing Borderline offensive statements like this. Mm, would you mind crossing your legs so I can stare at your feet? Uncomfortable <laughs> ride shares. Here, let me pour more lipstick on for you. It had better be a lot cheaper. <laughs> Utopia, Utopia Archipelago. Archipelago. So you're the marmoset that grants wishes? Well, I wouldn't call it granting wishes. Well, what would you call it? Um, endowing yearnings. Did you just translate granting wishes in uh, your thesaurus? A little. Carry on. Well, I have a yearning that I won't endowed. Mm, quickly, we're bogging down. Okay, well, I'm a gambler, and I want to be the world's luckiest man. I can grant you part of that. <laughs> Why just part? Uh, my yearning granting doesn't cover gender reassignment. Well, do you have a brochure of what your yearning granting covers? Well, I had to stop doing that in the 1920s. That's a peculiar detail. Let's I... focus on endowing the yearning of being the world's luckiest gambler. Okay, but I'm yearning just as much for the gender reassignment. More. I will make you a bet. Oh, so far, so good. And if you win the bet, you will instantly become the world's luckiest gambler. I'm not sure I follow that logic, but I'm game. Okay, what's the bet? Mm, I bet you won't approve this payday loan for me. My credit is horrifying. Oh, it can't be that bad. You ever see one in the one-digit range? No. With a gorgon's head? Your credit has a gorgon's head? Yes. <laughs> I was teleported through time from the Old West to the present day. Mm, speaking of peculiar details. And now I work at a storefront payday loan company. Oh, do you? Well, that, that seems, seems straightforward. I just need to take a look at that credit. Oh, but of course. I'll just plug it in. That credit to my... I'll just plug in that credit score to my payday loan approval app. Oh, a Gorgon, huh? Like monsters who turn humans into stone? Mm, thank you. Let's wait 30 seconds. Three, two, one. For what? Oh, oh, I'm turning into stone! You jerk! How is this lucky? A new stone single marshal statue will now greet the patrons of the Bronze Rodeo Casino and Resort in Chimichiki, Oklahoma. Utopia, Utopia Archipelago. Archipelago! Excuse me, mock 
Ski, mm. see, Captain. Me? <laughs> uh, your question in uh, exposes an inferior intellect. Exposes? <laughs> you have just proven my point. I'll ask someone else. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Maybe I can help. Does, uh, does this help? What are you doing? <laughs> Licking your kidney. Is it helping? I'm not sure. But keep doing it. While you're at it, I'm looking for someone. Perhaps you've seen her. Uh, did you have peaches yesterday? How did you know? Well, when you lick as many kidneys as I do... <laughs> So, uh, you're looking for someone. <laughs> that is right. My grandmother. Oh, well, 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 tell me about her. She's the parent of my parent. Grand. <laughs> what else? She was a famous torch singer in the 1920s. You mean a singer of sentimental love songs? Typically one in which the singer laments an unrequited or lost love? More like, hey, everyone, I'm on fire. Use me to chase monsters. Oh, well, I may be able to help you find your grandmother. And for that, I would be eternally grateful. How do we begin? <laughs> I'll just expose my genitals. Holy fuck, you have 80-year-old lady parts and an outward appearance of an adult man in a ridiculous sailor suit. <laughs> well, 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 yes, I had a primitive gender reassignment. Primitive? In what way? The procedure was performed by monkeys. And I, I changed my mind partway through the procedure. <laughs> you were a man who became a woman, but then converted partway back. Why do you say partway? It's kind of a mismatch down there. Like egg salad with pickles. <laughs> That's very accurate. <laughs> but also, that means that you are my grandmother. Well, I am your grandmother, Yona. Why didn't you just say that from the start? <laughs> and pass up a chance to show a Native American my genitals? Utopia Archipelago! Utopia Archipelago! But I thought I told you I didn't want to see you in my courtroom again. Well, yeah, you also told me you didn't want my feet on your toothbrush, <laughs> but that ain't stopping me. <laughs> You're charged with getting a greyhound confused with a whippet. Well, I defy anyone to tell the difference between a greyhound and a whippet, Judge Henrietta. Whippets are smaller and tend to hold their cigarettes. All weird, like Frenchmen. Whereas greyhounds tend to use Audrey Hepburn-style cigarette holders. Well, since when is getting dogs confused even a crime? <laughs> well, it depends on how you get the dogs confused. Well, well see, I had them take the Meyer Briggs type indicator while I hid their toys. And did that confuse them? My client does not have to answer that. You're acting like your own lawyer? That's right. <laughs> Do you have any legal training? Does reading popsicle boxes count? Well, only popsicle boxes approved by the Bar Association. Um, jurisprudence pops? Yes. Mm, well, it was actually a bomb pop. <gasps> you're, you're bringing a bomb into my courtroom? Oh, ah! Judge Henrietta ran screaming from the courtroom. Ah! Now she's running around screaming in the courtroom. <laughs> and she left again. Well, I guess I won my case. Bop pops for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Utopia yeah. Archipelago. Henrietta, where are you going? Get out of the way, Lewis. There's a bomb in the courthouse. <gasps> then, then shouldn't you be saying, doesn't a judge have to go down with their courthouse? Like a captain going down with their ship? A yeppers. That's just stupid. Did somebody say stupid? That's not a thing, Loopy Loo. Uh, it's two. It's not. I fear that I am caught between two warring prisoners. What makes you think that we're prisoners? You're wearing an orange jumpsuit, and Lupe Lou is wearing white, is wearing stripes. Okay, read a Vogue, bitch. This shit is lit. What makes you think we're warring? You have war paint on your faces. Read a Cosmo, bitch. War paint turns our boardroom into orgasm palooza room, trademark. Okay, I'm supposed to also have frank discussions. I know Frank. With my partner about my sexual, what my sexual boundaries are. What Frank likes to play. 
Sex Red Rover. What's that? Allow me to demonstrate. Red Rover, Red Rover, let Lewis come. Dude! <laughs> We're not prisoners. Prove it. Okay, well, hello, Big Lots. I'd like to join your rewards program. <gasps> prisoners cannot sign up for Big Lots rewards programs by phone. We're not warring. Prove it. Well, if we were warring, that bitch would already be dead, okay? You dig? Oh, come at me, Henrietta. That wasn't a very satisfying way to end this endowment uraning. <laughs> you took oh, yeah. yeah. Archipelago. Okay, that wasn't even a clever twist in. No, so. it just ended. Yeah. <laughs> Utopia <Yeah>. Archipelago! <laughs> Abandoned water park liquidation sale. Abnormal water pick lamification snail. Abandoned water park liquidation sale. Abandoned Weebler liquid nitrogen Salvador Dolly. Bronze Rodeo Sluiceland is going out of business. Braille reindeer watermelon sloop limbo is going out of business. Bronze Rodeo water Sluiceland is going out of business. Bread Rusty Woman Slug Lines is going out of business! Bud, look what I have in my hand. Um, 90s porno? Yep, go fetch the porno, bud. I'll get your 90s porno! <laughs> nice move, Kay. Thanks, Miss Fields. Feel free to use it on Lewis. With Lewis, it's even easier. Hey, Lewis! Yes? Go away until you hear otherwise. Bye! Rod's Rodeo Water Slice Water Sluice Land is going out of business. And that means savings for you. So take advantage of the great savings on an inflatable captive bolt pistol. The tool that stuns slaughterhouse cows? That's right. Ghastly. <laughs> Why pay full price for pens and corrals which funnel a herd of guests arriving at a water park into a single file for ready for slaughter? Slaughter? Fun. I mean, ready for fun. This is starting to make me uncomfortable. Stop aggressively inflating that Captain Bolt pistol! I don't like that look in your eyes. What look? <laughs> Abandoned water park liquidation sale! Abandoned water park liquidation sale! Utopia, Utopia Archipelago! Call Captain Goodfellow. Why, Lucy? Well, these are twin beds. So? Well, if I wanted to sleep in twin beds, I never would have escaped from prison. Well, technically, those were bunk cots. Uh, please don't remind me about helping you escape. I fucking deserve that. Well, still, it wasn't my best career move. It's not like we have ever consummated our marriage. Anyway. I told you that I have a lady virus that turns men's junk into water balloons. You did? Yes, we did, but, but sometimes I think that would be worth it. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, wait, quick question. Uh, anything, my little taffeta mockingbird. Since we're <laughs> married, can uh, you can't testify against me in court, right? Um, about that, Lucy. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not liking the sound of this. Our marriage uh, may not be all that legal. How so? We never consummated the marriage. Oh, God, I'm pretty sure that's bullshit. No way that makes a marriage illegal. Well, that and the person who performed the wedding ceremony was my buddy, Chester. Oh, your ventrilo ventriloquist dummy? Yepper. Yeah. Well, would you mind using that phone to call Captain Goodfellow? Well, uh, of course. Uh, sh shall I turn my back to you to increase my phone cord strangleability? Uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, uh, hello? Captain Goodfellow? <laughs> Utopia Archipelago! Oh, Miss Bear, what's the matter? My voice is, is hard in my voice. Well, then I try to structure our conversation in a way that only requires one-word answers. Good. I'm just going to come right out and say it. Hurry! I miss having two good eyes, you know, after the gouging out. That's futile. Also, I miss jump splits. I miss front hurdlers and side hurdlers and... Toe touches and pack jumps and double nine jumps and herkies! Cheerleader! I want a squad reunion. You quit! 
Um, remember why? International restraining order. Well, yeah. Well, maybe if we go way south of the border. Well, how far south? Argentina. Bueno. Disguises. Yemen. Utopia. Archipelago. Bud, there's a huge goldfish. It's a koi. It's definitely a tad coquettish. It's a koi fish, Lewis. There's another one. I see it. They have very many looks on their faces. Lewis, you have always been great at reading fishes' expressions. These koi fishes look mean because they are deadly. If I was deadly, I would have a big stupid grin on my face all the time. Ah! But it's deadly! You two are 30 seconds into your commercial. You haven't even said the name of the product yet. What What are you talking about? What's a product? Single Marshall, it looks like we're on our own in this commercial. We've been on our own before, Yona. R remember the time the British cavalry officer... Single I mean Marshall, the commercial. Oh, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> we're promoting a special podcast offer for Deadly Koi. Deadly Koi. <clears throat> Deadly Koi. When all traditional home protection methods have failed, including really violent home guy security, that's where Deadly Koi come in. All you need is to take advantage of this podcast offer is a moat. Or a pond. <laughs> I guess, but I'm more of a purist. Your enemies will try to vanquish you, and they will say, Look at those darling Koi! I'd like to swim with them now! <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to do that with your voice? Do what? Make it sound so nasal. Nasal? My voice didn't sound na- It didn't sound nasal. Hey, hey, Lewis! Have, have you seen these giant, angry-looking goldfish? Koi. I'm Lewis! The fish are called Koi. This human man is called Lewis! What about you swim with them, boys? Hey, hey, <laughs> we're men! Calling us boys is demeaning! But we love swimming in strange places. Yeah, especially with fish with sharp teeth. As I'm putting my leg in, it's like it's in the middle of some of those wind-up chomping teeth. Uh-huh. Only they're laser sharp. Uh-huh. This one is trying to eat things from my groins. Deadly koi. Deadly koi. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm losing a lot of blood. Uh-huh, me too. And it's really making the fish swarm. Yeah, it, it, it's like a feeding fish. Fonzie! Frenzy! Yeah! <laughs> Utopia Archipelago! Well, it's been an interesting week, Nelson the Marmoset. Mm, it sure has, Captain Goodfellow the Human. It, it has been a whole lot of hard work. Mm, endowing yearnings is never easy, Captain Goodfellow. Well, I know that. Why would you think I don't know that? <laughs> Well, all in all, I think we were able to fulfill our guest yearnings. Oh, but the single marshal was turned into a statue and Yuna learned that you were her grandmother. Well, sure, but, uh... uh but tried to be his own lawyer and made a bomb threat in a courthouse. I, I mean, I can see where you might say that that was not a success. Lewis well, uh, vignette didn't go anywhere. Oh, well, yeah, it, it didn't. I mean, does, does anyone even edit these scripts? Lucy and Warden Mooney realized they weren't married. Well, that's, that's not so bad. And Lucy strangled Warden Mooney. All right. Viv and Pete skipped down to try and stay out of the lore. I get it, Nelson. <laughs> I'm a fluck up. <laughs> Who wants Boilermakers at the airport bar? Who has two thumbs and a ridiculous looking mustache? Well, I mean, probably a whole... Oh, sorry. This guy! <laughs> Utopia Archipelago! Well, I should have been in that episode more. Me too. No, I think you were in it enough. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Far Out Fiesta episode 157, Utopia Archipelago. I have been your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Briscoe. Oh, yeah. And Rob Hutchbeth. Oh. Does anybody have anything they would like to plug? I actually <laughs> do. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't got your team yet for Mary Scary, the Mary Scary Christmas oh, yeah. 
film race. It's actually not a 48-hour film festival anymore. It's a film race. Uh, the film deadline, race. I believe, is What's the 20th. What's the difference between a 48-hour film festival yeah. and a film race? I think it's more days. I don't think they just have 48 hours now. I think they have uh, perhaps a full week. Yes. Oh, so and it's not I, called 48 Hour anymore. No, it's huh. Mary Scary. Uh, it's, it's, it's Mary Scary. <laughs> Our friends at um, Demonic Chronic, formerly Demonic Chronic anyway. I think they're called something else now. But if you have yes. not signed up your team yet, go ahead and sign it up. We've got some really, really amazing sponsors. I believe the kickoff is on the 20th. And then I believe uh, the ceremony is sometime after. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be closer to Christmas because it's like a Christmas theme right. horror film. Oh, oh, this right. is what the third year yeah. up, third, fourth, Gosh, fifth, it, it, We've been we've been doing it every year. Every that's all year, I know. That's right. Since the <laughs> early seventies. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> right. wow. Thanks, everybody. anybody else? Uh, no, no. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, everybody. Latest. <laughs>